audience, please rise. Scout salute, forward march. Detail hold. Prepare to post the colors. Post the colors. Will you please join me in pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Scouts in this audience with you. All right. Good morning, church. How is everybody this Independence Day weekend? So these are the the the, 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 the hardy and sturdy attendees today this morning. So welcome and thank you for coming. Um, should be uh, hopefully be uh, an interesting service. Be a, a joy for all to be involved and be a part of. Um, some quick announcements, if you'll turn to the announcements in your bulletin. Um, we are not going to have a fellowship meal uh, this week, and we're also not going to have a church conversation. So um, have time with your family uh, this weekend and uh, enjoy those uh, those moments. So that, that's the focus. Um, we I do want to go and connect the, the pastor connection card there. Um, although we're currently without a pastor, if you would still, if you have a need uh, fill that out and put that in the offertory plate, and um, we will find someone to to work with you and, and find us and, and to work on those issues. So please go ahead and communicate with us in those ways. Um, we have a number of birthdays this week and one anniversary. I'm glad we've got that in the paper so I can remember that one. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Okay, well, seeing none, if you will join me in a moment of prayer, and we'll go get started. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you now for uh, this time uh, where we can gather together, and we thank you for this country where we can do so in uh, peace and security. Um, help us to remember that not everyone is able to celebrate you with the freedom that we're able to, um, and we thank you for what you've given us and the many blessings. We ask now you guide and protect us throughout this um, help us to be in this service with a uh, spirit of, of listening and expectancy and, and knowing that uh, we're here to learn more about you and to, to be together, closer together as a family. In your name we pray. Amen. almost a, a knee snapper.
Chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and right above, His mercy reigns, a living love, amazing.
Okay, so I did this uh, presentation a couple of years ago and was asked to do it again. Um, and so I'm going to start this off with I'm going to have to ask everyone to use a little bit of their imagination uh, because there's supposed to be a lemon slice on that plate and the lemon's in the refrigerator and I forgot to make the slice. So uh, pretend there's a lemon slice there. Everything else is ready. That's the one thing I forgot. Um, so what this is is uh, the POW MIA table. And this is something that all militaries do, or mil U.S. militaries, um, that we do when we're having um, what it's called a ball. Every every service has a ball. It's a, like especially they're they're uh, uh, annually. The, the, so there's the Air Force the Air Force ball, uh, the Navy ball, and and now that there's a Space Force, I, I take great joy in knowing that there are space balls. Um, <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, but but every service does this, even the Marines, it's just that they tend to eat the candles. So, but we still do this. Um, but this is, officially, this is a toast, and it's a, uh, it's a solemn thing, um, and it's a remembrance of, of those service members who are still serving overseas. Um, they're just lost and unaccounted for. Um, and so... I cracked the jokes so I wouldn't get too emotional about it, but I'm going to try to do this. So as you enter the room, you may have noticed a special table. It is reserved to honor our missing men and women. We call them comrades, but they are unable to be with their loved ones and families. So we join together to pay humble tribute to them and to bear witness to their continued absence. So let me now explain the meaning of this table and then join me in a moment of silent prayer. The table is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against his or her captors. The table is round to show our everlasting concern. The chair is empty, depicting an unknown face representing no specific soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, but all who were not here with us. The cloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when answering the call to serve. The napkin, the napkin is black, symbolizing the emptiness these warriors have left in the hearts of their friends and families. A single red rose with the red ribbon signifies the blood they have shed in sacrifice to ensure the freedom of our beloved United States of America. And the red ribbon represents the love of our country, which inspired them to answer the nation's call. The candle and yellow ribbon symbolize our continuing uncertainty, the hope for their return, and our determination to account for them. The lighted candle is reminiscent of the light of hope, which lives in our hearts to illuminate their way home, away from their captors, to the open arms of a grateful nation. A slice of lemon on the bread plate reminds us of their bitter fate, captured or missing in a foreign land. A pinch of salt on the bread plate symbolizes the unnumbered tears of our missing and their families. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain us and those lost from our country, founded as one nation under God. The flag reminds us that many of them may never return and have paid the supreme sacrifice to ensure our freedom. The glass is inverted, symbolizing their inability to share in our toast. And the chair is empty, for they are not here. So let us now pray to the supreme commander that all of our comrades will soon be back within our ranks, and let us never forget their sacrifice. May God forever watch over them and protect them and their families. So if you will join me in just a quick moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you now for those who have served their countries in foreign lands and have made that sacrifice of either their lives or their fortunes or their presence. 
We ask that you be with them wherever they may be. And if those that can, we would pray for their return. And for those that will never return, we pray for them and their families. In the name we pray. Amen. So maybe I should have said the jokes after. Um, oh, so now, okay. This, I'll turn it over to Ron. I have a different version, but we're going to read this, Matthew 26, starting with verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very depressed. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Using as my text, of what I have read this morning, only those six words, and he went a little further. I'd like to speak with you this morning about three individuals who I believe done the same thing as Jesus did. They stepped out on their faith, and they went a little further. And because of that, their lives were changed, and they were never the same again. First one we want to read about, and I am big on Scripture, I can tell you that, and so we're going to read Scriptures this morning, and uh, I've even went to the, uh, as far as to look in the Pew Bible, and the page is 1,029. So you can get your pew Bibles out, and I want you to go and follow along with me. 1,029 on our first is Luke chapter 8, verses 43 through 48. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, who had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed by any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood staunched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude crowd thee and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared unto him and before all the people what cause that she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, Be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee well. Go in peace. We have a woman who has an issue of blood and has had this for 12 years. She's been to all the physicians in that community, all in the surrounding area, and all she has done is giving them her money. And she didn't get any better, but instead, the scripture tells us that she grew worse. But she conceived in her heart, she believed in her soul, that if she could just see Jesus, if she could just talk to Jesus, maybe if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would be healed. So she stepped out on her faith, and she got up that morning, she went to the path that Jesus was to be coming down, and oh Lord, a multitude of people. She hadn't seen this many people, maybe ever. Another thing I'd like to point out 
if this woman who had this issue of blood was seen with other people or other people with her, according to the Jewish law, she was in big time trouble. That was their law then. She was considered unclean and yet she stepped out on her faith. She thought to herself, I don't care if I'm wrong. I don't care if there's a law. I don't care about the rules. I want to see Jesus. But now, that wasn't looking so good. Now there was a crowd here, and if she was to see him or touch his garment, she would have to be in front. She has got to get to the front of this crowd to the path where Jesus will be coming down. She needs to find that opening and break through into that path. So I could see her probably starting out, trying to be as nice as she knew how, saying, excuse me, excuse me, could I get by? Pardon me, excuse me, sir. I need to get to the front of the line. I, I need to see Jesus. Well, they probably all looked at her like, so do we. Who are you? But she kept going. She, she didn't stop. She didn't give up because she perceived in her heart. And I could see visioning this as reading this that she probably may well have got knocked down. Because think about it. Not only has she exhausted her money, but she was physically exhausted for bleeding for 12 years. She's got to be a frail person. But she's still making her way. She's still going. Maybe she's on the ground. Maybe she's crawling now. It doesn't really tell us that. But it could be. And oh now, finally, finally, she reaches that opening and she's at the actual path that Jesus is coming down. But guess what? He just went by. She missed him. Well, in this clearing that she's in, maybe she was able to gain a little control. She got up again. And she came up behind him. And she bent over and touched the hem of his garment. And then immediately back into the crowd. She didn't want anybody to know she'd done it. And Jesus immediately stopped. And he said, who touched me? And the disciples are like, Lord, what do you mean? Look at the crowd. They're pushing, they're shoving. And you want to know who touched you? No, 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 you don't understand. Someone touched me, for I felt the power leave me. And the woman felt it too, because she knew immediately she was healed when she touched the hem of his garment. But she was still scared and backed into the crowd. The Shekinah glory of God, the very power of God himself, flowed through Jesus into this woman who stepped out on her faith and had enough faith that she could touch the hem of his garment because she believed she'd be healed. And she was. When she knew that she couldn't hide any longer, she stepped back out and confessed that she was the one who had touched him. And he said, Go thy way, my daughter. Thy faith has made thee whole. What if, when she got there that day, she saw that crowd and said, forget it. I can't do this. Just forget it. I'm going to go home. But no. What did she do? She went a little further. And because of that, she received her healing, and her life was changed 
forever. Now we're going to talk about another guy this time. And I guarantee it, even the kids know this guy. He's a wee little man. He is short in stature. Who do you think we're going to talk about? Zacchaeus. Yeah. Look on uh, in, your, in your pew Bible. It's on 1043, the 19th chapter of the book of Luke, the first 10 verses. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was the chief among the tax collectors, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not because of the crowd, for he was little of stature. And he ran ahead, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, forasmuch as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Another story very similar to the one we just talked about. Zacchaeus had also heard about this man named Jesus, and he knew that they were, he was to be coming down a certain path that day. And so he made himself ready, and he got out there, and just like the woman with the issue of blood, he found a large crowd. And the scripture tells us he was short in stature, so all he was looking at was the back head of everybody that was in front of him. And he thought to himself, this isn't going to happen. This is a failure. I'm not going to get to see this man called Jesus. I guess I can just go home. And as he turned to start home, he looked down the road, down that same path that the Savior was coming down, and he saw a sycamore tree, and he thought in his heart, he perceived in his spirit, if I could go climb that tree, I could sit up there on that branch, and I would have a bird's eye view of everything that was going on, and wouldn't even, nobody would even know I was there. That's what I'm going to do. And he ran and climbed the tree, got up there on that limb and he was enjoying it he was sitting there watching the people watching and he could see Jesus coming there he was yet a far away but he was making his way there and he thought this is so neat there is no one nobody knows I'm up here now, what he didn't know is he was talking about the son of God but he didn't know that and the scripture tells us that as Jesus passed that way, when he got to that tree, he stopped. And he said, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to go to your house and we're going to have dinner. We're going to have eat, we're going to drink, and we're going to have a good time together. And the scripture says that he came down immediately and went with the Lord to his house and they did have a dinner. And, of course, all the religious leaders and people like that were standing about and saying, he is having dinner with sinners. Aren't we all? We are all that. We are all just sinners saved by grace. Thank God. But the Spirit was so heavy on Zacchaeus that day that he stood up 
and he confessed to the Lord, and he said, I'm going to give half of everything I've got to the poor. We already know he was a very wealthy man. Now, he wasn't highly thought of because most tax collectors weren't highly thought of because they probably did charge more than they were supposed to at times. But he said he was going to give half of everything he had to the poor and also that if he had wronged anybody falsely in taking something from them, he was going to pay it back fourfold, four times more than what he had taken. And Jesus said, today salvation has come to the house of Zacchaeus. And now think about that. The house, not just Zacchaeus, but the servants, everybody from that house believed on Jesus and accepted him. And the whole household was saved. Because well, Zacchaeus went a little further, didn't he? He could, have, he could have quit. He could have went home. But he looked and saw that tree. And he went a little further and clung. And because of that, not only was he saved, but his whole household was saved as well. We have one more I'd like to visit with about. Now, we're going to change our books. We're going to go to Mark, and that is found on 1007 in your pew Bible. I love Scripture. I guess you could figure that out. And I'm kind of, I've been told that I'm more of a teaching preacher. Uh, that's probably true. Uh, I, would, I would probably accept that. This is another man that we probably all have read about. We've read this story numerous times, I'm sure, about blind Bartimaeus, the beggar that sat on the, on the road of Jericho. Starting in verse 46 through 52, let's read that. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. There are so many things right here that I, I, I just, I, yeah, I, I get charged up just reading that. There's so many things in there that I think we read sometimes and we just don't grasp it. But if you ever get a hold of it, it's good stuff. We have a man who is blind and he is sitting on the roadside. And when you get into this and really study stuff like this, which I have read about, they had a designated area in this town. And over here is where the beggars would sit. And so everybody knew that. When you came into this town, when you saw that, you knew, well, there's a bunch of beggars. That's their designated area. And they was either led to this area as Bartimaeus being blind, but that was where they sat asking for alms. They were also given a cloak. They wore a special type of cloak. And that too told people when they saw that cloak, 
that guy's a beggar. You all immediately knew that when you saw it. Jesus really didn't do a lot of... Jericho wasn't that famous of a deal for him. He had been there many times. This particular time, it looks like that he hadn't stayed very long. He came into Jericho, and the next thing it says, he's leaving Jericho. I don't, I don't, he didn't do a whole lot. He, it was like he was just passing through. He got in, he went part way to town, he turned around, he was coming back. He just, he just didn't, it wasn't his thing. So he's coming back out, and of course there's crowds, there's people chanting. Bartimaeus heard this. He knew Jesus was coming by. And so him, like everybody else, he decided, you know, if I would just holler at him, which is also against the law, to holler at a rabbi, but he didn't care. He didn't care. He wanted Jesus to give him his sight. So he hollered out, Hail, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people turned and said, Shut up! Who are you? Look where you're sitting. Look what you're wearing. Who are you to talk to that man? And the scripture says he didn't let that bother him. And he hollered again, this time even louder. Hail thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. And he said, bring him to me. He called for him. Well, now the people kind of changed their, their tune a little bit. Ooh, hey, he's wanting you. He wants to talk to you. And what did he do? What did Bartimaeus do, the first thing? Other than get up. He took that cloak off, didn't he? I'm not that anymore. I'm not going to be that anymore. The world has told me this is who I am. But I'm not going to do it anymore. And off the cloak came. And they brought him to him, to Jesus. And here is something that, don't miss this, guys. Jesus asked a question. Wow, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Jesus cast demons out of the demoniac man and cast them into a herd of swine. They all ran down and drowned. But he didn't ask him what he wanted. He was preaching one time in a house and four friends took their friend with them that couldn't walk. They tore the roof off and let him down on a pallet. And Jesus didn't ask him what he wanted. He said, take up your bed and walk. Look at this. This is there for a reason. Jesus asked him, what wilt thou that I should do? unto thee. And Bartimaeus said, Lord, that I might have my sight. And Jesus said, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee well. Have you heard from Jesus? Are we so wrapped up in the world? Are we sitting in a certain area? Do we have a cloak on that's telling the world or the world telling us who we are? Now, this is the only time in Scripture and all these healings that Jesus ever done when he asked this question. What can I do for you today? He's still asking. He's still asking. 
He's asking you and me. Do you hear him? Have you heard from him? Don't miss this. Don't miss Jesus. You know, he's coming this way. He's here. He's here this morning. Right here. Don't miss him. He went a little further all those years ago for us in the Garden of Gethsemane. Would you go a little further for him today? I pray that you would. Especially with everything we're going through. The church and things that, are, that are, we're, we're facing. Pray to him. Talk to him and then listen for him to say, what can I do for you today? And then tell him. Tell him what you need, whatever that may be. Whatever issue you have, tell him. Talk to him. We're going to have prayer here in a little bit. And I hope that you would come to the altar and talk to him. Go a little further for him today. But he sure went a whole lot further for us when he died on that cross and took our sin. Would you do it for me? Go a little further. Just like these people did, I promise you, your life will never be the same. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Ron. If the ushers would please come forward, it's time now for our um, offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for the abundance that you have blessed us with. We thank you for uh, the message. We ask now you help us to give with a cheerful heart to the furtherance of your uh, mission in here in, in the world. And we pray. Amen. If you'll join me in the singing of the doxology. Now is time for our sharing of joys and concerns. Um, as always, we do have some on the, on the back of your announcement of the bulletin, so 
uh, please be aware of those. But does anyone else have any joys or concerns they would like to bring forward today? Okay, well, I'll throw one out there. I'm going to prayer of concern for all those who are setting off fireworks and not using their full brain. Because there will be more than a few of those, so be with those. Um, we, ha we had some great news. Uh, Debbie's been uh, diagnosed with breast cancer, and she has had uh, her surgery, and the, the results from that are great. And she found out that she's not going to need chemo because the stage that the cancer is at is a low moderate and so she's looking at uh, some radiation and then a, a pill that she'll take for uh, four or five years. And so she, she's, uh, we're rejoicing that uh, that's the state that we find my Debbie in. And she's being blessed and healed right now. Are there any other joys or concerns? Okay, well, hearing none, if you'll join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you now for uh, the, the many blessings that you've given us, both spoken and unspoken. Uh, we pray for those who are, are listed in the, uh, the bulletin for those special uh, needs that have been addressed. We ask that you be with this, this country as we have families gathering and traveling. Be with them as they are on the road and as they, they go about those events to keep them safe so this could be a time of joy. Lord, we thank you for healing. Uh, for those members in the, in, in the congregation, Both we know there are both spoken and unspoken health concerns out there, and we thank you for that you've put your hand out and have healed those individuals, and we pray that you be with those who are still working through those health concerns to, to be with them and to, and to give them your touch as well. We be with those families who have experienced loss over this last week as, as they adjust to the new realities of their life. We, we pray that you be with them and, and to give them comfort. And in all things, we just, we just praise you and, and thank you for what you've done for us and what you've promised to do for us in the future and help us to step forward and to step out and to listen for your voice in our lives. In your name we pray, amen. The closing hymn is uh, number 697 in your hymnal, America, My Country, Peace and Freedom.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. We ask that you reach your hand out in this congregation as we go out into the community and spread your word and live your truth. In all these things, we pray your name and for your blessings. Amen. Thank you.